Ladies and gentlemen, let's try Gaming Central video. I think we should discuss further the PlayStation 4's so-called massive performance boost. So back just a couple of days ago on May 19th, there were rumours flying about from Tidux that there was going to be a huge performance boost for the PlayStation 4. And this led to a lot of guesswork, supposition, and flat out just what the hell could they mean from pretty much everyone on the internet. So, some of the theories were everything from, well, we're going to be seeing a CPU or GPU, or GPU I'm sorry, up clock, or we're going to be seeing maybe reductions in the memory reserve and so on and so forth, but it doesn't appear to be any of these, which is not exactly surprising. I've done an article link to this, by the way, because there is going to be some stuff that we're going to be discussing which gets a bit technical, and there's also some links in the article for you to peruse, including a PDF white paper um, and image, which kind of uh, demonstrates what I'm referring to. So this all began when Ashan Rashid was asked on Twitter, I've got a link to his uh, personal Twitter, or rather the update of his Twitter, for your convenience in the article, and he said um, in regards to, well, is this something Sony are going to announce? You know, is this going to be something that's all singing, all dancing? Is it going to be like a major update to the firmware? Is it going to be, I don't know, angels coming from the sky or something like that? And, um, okay, maybe I'm slightly exaggerating, but still, you get the idea. And he said, well, it's actually more to do with SDKs improving. Ice Team is legendary uh, with their work on the PS4 uh, tool side, so you won't really hear about it. Then he decided to go a little bit further into detail, which was quite nice, because, well, it wasn't really into detail at all until this point. Further SDK improvements on the PS4 will focus on GPGPU -GP rendering. This is where the delta between the PS4 and X1 will magnify, he said. So... When you think about it, logically speaking, there was no other way, no other direction at all for this to have gone. Because it's very unlikely right now that Sony are going to be screwing around the RAM reserves. This is pretty much what I said previously. It was possible, sure. It's like you can fall out of an aeroplane and survive if it's quite high. People have done that. You can Google it. People, you know, especially um, a couple of stewardesses have survived from airplane crashes. But it's unlikely, and Sony weren't really going to do that, because Project Morpheus hasn't even been released. And so, they're obviously doing something, allocating this memory in reserve for a reason. In other words, they don't really know how it's all going to play out, and they're like, you know what, let's not give away memory that we might possibly need to, well, run the hardware. So, that was a very low possibility. It was a possibility if they'd already done the calculations, but most likely they hadn't. They could have improved the clock speeds of the processor or the GPU. Those were certainly possibilities, but I, once again, didn't really think they were going to do it at this point. The other problem with increasing clock speeds is there is always going to be a rate of return on the hardware from some people, because... What could basically happen, and this is pretty much speed binning in a nutshell, but basically, let's say that you have a CPU that's a good, uh, let's just say up to 1 gigahertz, let's just be, you know, uh, somewhat conservative with our figures. So let's say it's good up to a gigahertz, like that's the highest end, but you make a product which is going to be running at 800 megahertz, well... There are going to be some processors, even though that they're supposed to be running at 1 gigahertz, theoretically, the silicon is just at a lower quality. It's like, not all silicon is the same. This is why some overclockers are just insanely lucky with their hardware, and they can get, I don't know, double the speed with the same voltage, okay, maybe slightly exaggerating, but still. Whereas others could pretty much double the voltage, once again, vastly exaggerating, and basically it just ignores their pleas to raise a single megahertz. So my point being, uh, before I got all silly, was that it could simply be a case that they increase the clock speed from, say, the GPU from 800 to 850, and they have a failure rate. It could be 0.01%, or it could be 5%, or whatever, of PS4s. The GPUs, the silicon that made up the GPU just wasn't quite up to snuff, and therefore Sony gets a return on the console. Therefore, they have to really do a lot of considerations regarding that, and it's unlikely that they want to do so quite yet. I'm not saying it's not a possibility, it certainly is. 
but I don't think they're going to be doing so when you consider the PS4 is only, what, seven-ish? Six, seven months old? Something like that. So, it was more like the all along, particularly because Ice Team were involved, that it was going to be something SDK related. And, um... When you consider the architectural similarities between this and the Volcanic Island GPUs, I've done this in the article and I'm not going to cover this again in the video. It's simply because I've covered this several times over and there's just no point in me going all over it again in the video to add length to video. If you're interested, you can either Google it or you can check the link and I've done the information for you there. So it's up to you on that. Um, so when you consider the similarities between um, that, plus as well what Mark Cerny has discussed previously, he's obviously the light lead architect and said it's pretty much, well, the future really is in GPU computing. This is pretty much like me saying to you one, two, three. In other words, each one is a logical progression. And so the idea behind SDKs, fairly obviously, is to give developers pretty much a helping hand. Now, obviously, that's not to say that some of the other stuff that we've discussed in the video isn't going to come true. There's likely going to be firmware updates which are going to improve the performance of the system. There could possibly be some driver updates involved in the future. Um, and obviously, this is going to go hand in hand with things such as development kits. Possibly, we'll see a reduction in memory reserves and so on. But for right now, I think Sony are just focused on optimizing what's already there. Because... It's like, what's the point in freeing up all these other reserves when the console is, what, not even a year old? By the time they've finished all this and developers really get a handle on it, it's going to be, what, say, 12 months to 18 months before games are going to be using this technology. Theoretically, let's just throw those in. So, it's like, it's not even, what, around a quarter of the console's lifespan? Say it's out for five years, as like the... The lead console for Sony, it's out for five years. It doesn't make sense for them to start worrying about that before they optimize it. It's like, why would you optimize before you've even put the rest of the system in? To put it into PC perspectives, it would be the equivalent of buying a really high-end graphics card, not even updating the drivers, basically just installing it, trying a couple of games, thinking, eh, I, I don't know, I'm not even going to bother to try and... Um, set anything, I'm not going to bother to try and new drivers or anything like that, instead I'm just going to go out and buy a second card. It doesn't really make sense, does it? You would first of all optimize the system, especially if you've just built it, you would optimize the system first, make sure everything ran okay, and then you would buy the second card. Wait, maybe you wouldn't. Maybe you would be like me and think, well, it looks so shiny. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna leave you guys to it. As I said, hopefully you enjoyed the video. I'll uh, see you soon. Take care and uh, bye for now.